This is the Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 96. Press through. Can you see anything? His assistant asked, as Carter's eyes adjusted to the semi-darkness. Carter could see well enough, but he had difficulty speaking because of the dazzling array of treasure spread out before him. For more than 2,000 years, tourists, grave robbers and archaeologists had searched for the burial places of Egypt's pharaohs. Armed with only a few scraps of evidence, British archaeologist Howard Carter's search after many years seemed doomed to failure. But Carter pressed through and finally unlocked an ancient Egyptian tomb. No one in the modern world had ever seen anything like it. The king's embalmed body lay within a nest of three coffins, the inner one of solid gold. On the king's head was a magnificent golden portrait mask, and numerous pieces of jewellery lay on the body and in its wrappings. Other rooms were crammed with statues, a chariot, weapons, chests, vases, daggers, jewels, and a throne. It was the priceless tomb and treasure of King Tutankhamun, who reigned from 1352 to 1343 BC. It was 3,265 years later, on the 26th November 1922, that Carter made this discovery. Howard Carter made the world's most exciting archaeological find because he did not give up seeking. He pressed through. He persevered. A river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. God loves you. He does not force himself upon you, but he promises to reveal himself to you if you persistently seek him. From Proverbs 8 Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, harm themselves. All who hate me, love death. Seek God's wisdom daily. We see here a wonderful picture of what you are doing each day as you open your Bible and seek to hear from God. You are watching daily at his door, waiting at his doorway. This is the way to life in all its fullness. This is the way to receive favor from the Lord. It's so important. It's a matter of life and death. We've seen that the wisdom of the book of Proverbs foreshadows Christ, who is the wisdom of God. It is not just a matter of learning some top tips for life, but learning from the source of wisdom himself. Seeking God requires discipline and patience. You have to learn to wait on God. You can miss out if you're in too much of a hurry. Lord, thank you that when I find you, I find life. Help me to seek you daily, to wait patiently for you, and to listen to your instructions. New Testament from Luke 11 Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? 
If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Seek God's Spirit persistently. Jesus encourages you not to be put off easily. He tells a story to show the power of persistence in even imperfect human relationships. He then goes on to explain how persistence is just as important in your relationship with God. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. For everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives. And he who seeks and keeps on seeking finds. And to him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be opened. Jesus particularly relates this to receiving the Holy Spirit. Keep on seeking for more of the Holy Spirit and his wisdom and power in your life. Jesus deals with some of the principal difficulties you may have in receiving from God. First, doubt. People have many doubts in this whole area. They wonder, if I ask, will I receive? Jesus simply says, I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Jesus must have seen that they were a little sceptical, because he repeats it in a different way. Keep on seeking and you will find. And again he says a third time, keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. He knows human nature, so he goes on a fourth time for everyone who asks receives. They're not convinced, so he says a fifth time, everyone who keeps on seeking finds. And again a sixth time, to everyone who keeps on knocking, the door will be opened. Why does he say it six times? Because he knows our tendency to doubt. You may find it very difficult to believe that God would give you anything, let alone something as wonderful as his Holy Spirit and the gifts that come from the Spirit. Second, fear. Even if you cleared the first hurdle of doubt, you may trip on the second hurdle of fear. The fear is about what you will receive. Will it be something good? Jesus uses the analogy of a human father. 
If a child asked for a fish, no father would give them a snake. If a child asked for an egg, no father would give them a scorpion. It's unthinkable that we would treat our children like that. Jesus goes on to say that in comparison with God, we're evil. If we would not treat our children like that, it's inconceivable that God would treat us like that. God will not let you down. If you ask for the Holy Spirit and all the wonderful gifts he brings, that is exactly what you will receive. Third, inadequacy. Of course it's important to ask for forgiveness and turn our back on all that we know is wrong. However, even after you have done that, you may have a vague feeling of unworthiness and inadequacy. You may not believe that God would give you anything. It's sometimes easier to believe that he'll give gifts to very advanced Christians, but not to us. But Jesus does not say how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to all very advanced Christians. He says, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The second part of the passage teaches us to make sure we're asking for the right things. Some people were seeking for a sign from heaven. These same people were attributing the work that Jesus was doing through the Holy Spirit to the devil. Jesus points out that the devil does not drive out demons as Jesus did. Then he tells them not to seek signs. The only sign we need is the sign of the resurrection. This is the sign that Jesus is greater than both Solomon and Jonah. Don't seek the wrong things, but never give up seeking God, his kingdom, his righteousness, and his Holy Spirit. Lord, today I ask you to refill me with the love, power, and wisdom that comes from your Spirit. Old Testament, from Deuteronomy 4 and 5. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore watch yourselves very carefully, so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman or like any animal on earth, or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground, or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky, and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. But as for you, The Lord took you and brought you out of the iron-smelting furnace, out of Egypt, to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you, and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan. But you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren, and have lived in the land a long time, If you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. Ask now about the former days, long before your time. 
from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? You were shown these things, so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. From heaven, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words from out of the fire. Because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength, to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you, and to bring you into their land, to give it to you for your inheritance, as it is today. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today so that it may go well with you and your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan to which anyone who had killed a person could flee if they had unintentionally killed a neighbor without malice aforethought. They could flee into one of these cities and save their life. The cities were these, Beza in the wilderness plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manasites. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peor east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. This land extended from Aroe on the rim of the Arnon Gorge to Mount Sirion, that is, Hermon, and included all the Araba east of the Jordan as far as the Dead Sea below the slopes of Pisgah. Deuteronomy chapter 5 Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, Israel, the decrees and the laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our ancestors that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them, or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, either you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long, and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud, and the deep darkness, and he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leaders of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a person can live even if God speaks with them. But now... Why should we die? This great fire will consume us and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go, tell them to return to their tents. But you stay here with me, so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws that you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Seek God's presence wholeheartedly. You can have a personal relationship with God. God says to his people, To you it was shown that you might realize and have personal knowledge that the Lord is God. Moses tells the people of God that they will be scattered among the nations. But, he said, If from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. We see the same emphasis on our relationship with God at the start of the Ten Commandments. We live in a world that thinks the only thing that matters is how we relate to other people. How we relate to others is hugely important and the subject of Commandments 6 to 10. However, there is something even more important than how you relate to others. Your relationship with God is the most important aspect of your life. It is out of this relationship that your love for others should flow. God is not an optional extra in your life. Moses says, the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He loves you. He chose you. 
and wants to bless you with his presence. He's a merciful God. He set you free from captivity as he freed the Israelites. I'm the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. It's in this context that he tells you to put your relationship with him above everything else. Commandments 1-4 to The next priority is your relationships in the family, then your relationship with others. Commandments 6-9 to Finally, Commandment 10 addresses your thought life. Moses tells the people to listen to these instructions, learn them, live them, like Howard Carter, press through. Seek God daily, persistently, and wholeheartedly. You will find life in all its fullness, and it will transform the way that you love and serve others. Lord, I seek your presence today wholeheartedly. Help me to experience personally your love and great strength, to listen to your commandments, to obey them, and to live under your favor. Pepper adds, In Deuteronomy 5 verse 29 it says, Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always. I find it easy to be frightened of the wrong things, which in my case are great heights, snakes, snarling dogs, violent people and a global pandemic. But the right sort of fear the awesome reverence of an all-powerful God is good. I need to do more revering of our great God to keep everything else in the right perspective. I like the next part of the verse that says, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. <laughs> 